dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, blessings, blessings from God above. I'm talking about the theme of blessing, especially in regards to what is happening in today's world regarding the issue of blessings. I would like to say, dear friends, that it is God who blesses, and he blesses everyone, everything as he wishes. He blessed us with the gift of creation and he continues to bless his people as he wishes when he wishes. And we are called to be channels through whom God's blessings reach our brothers and sisters and to share the blessings generously the way God shares the blessings with us. But before we understand exactly what blessings are, let us understand the basic aspect that underlies the etymology of the word, the word blessing. It comes from the Latin word benedictio, benedire, which could say and which means to speak well, to do well, to do good, to speak well of someone. To speak good of someone, to speak well of something. And it is God who speaks well of us. He does well of us for our good. So, and we speak well of God, thanking Him for His goodness. We do well to God by doing well and good to our brothers and sisters. I repeat, it's about doing well, speaking well, being good. And good is good. It cannot be mixed with bad. Any action is good when it is good by itself. And it does good to every human person. So when we talk, talk about the etymology of the word benedict, Sean, benedire, benedire, to speak well of the bl blessing. That's why we talk of God blessing his people. It is God first and foremost who blesses his people. He blesses you and me abundantly and he does not calculate his blessings. He's wishing well of me and of you. He wishes well each one of us as people first of all created in the image and likeness of God. And he wishes our good and asks us to be good to everyone that we meet. And that's why we also hear of the expressions like, we bless the Lord, let us bless the Lord, let us praise the Lord. Meaning, <laughs> who are we, human beings, to bless the Lord? It is God who blesses us, yes. But we can say that let us bless the Lord in the sense of let us speak well of God. Let us speak well of the wonders that God has done. Yes, we can say let us bless the Lord. Yes, that's when we can say, let us speak well of the many wonders that he did in the past, the many wonders he continues to do today, and the many wonders he will continue to do tomorrow and forever. Because our God is a God of surprises. He, can, he has endless blessings, and he blesses us so much more than we can desire. We cannot limit him. His blessings are too much. We are, he just shares his unmerited favors and blessings to us as his children whom he created in the image and likeness of God. We get, especially from the Old Testament, among the many moments in which God blessed his people, even as individuals. And one of the famous blessings is in Numbers. Chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you. Let his, let his, shine, his, face, his face shine on you and gra be gracious to you and grant you peace. A true blessing grants peace to everyone. A true blessing gives favor. May the Lord bless you. That was the wish, the beautiful blessing in Numbers chapter 6. May the Lord bless you. And this is what I said to you, my brother, my sister, that the Lord bless you as you are and wherever you are. It is the wish of the Lord that he extends his blessings, his many good things to each one of us whom he created in the image and likeness of God, whom he doesn't want that even one of us gets lost. That is Numbers. And we hear of another Psalm 3, 
bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. In good times, in challenging times, in darkness, in light. At all times, I'm invited to speak well of God. To bless the Lord at all times. Benedicam Domine in omni tempore. Let us bless the Lord at all times. And this is what we are invited to be and to do. To speak well of God and to speak well of each other. That is to bless each other. To speak well of each other because God works and speaks to through us to each other. My brother, my sister, do we speak well of each other? Do we do good to each other as brothers and sisters? So this is when we do good to each other, we speak well of each other. Then we are blessing the Lord who is present in the other, who is created in the image and likeness of God. So we hear of the invitation to bless the Lord at all times, in the night, in the day, in good times, in challenging times, in all times. We are invited to speak well of the Lord because the Lord is working out everything for our good. As Romans chapter 8 says, that the Lord, work, everything works out for the good of those who love the Lord. Yes, but we have to love the Lord and we have to do good. And every action, every word should aim at doing good, not doing evil, not doing bad, not doing an act that does not promote life. It's not about doing an act that does not promote life. If there is an act that does not promote life, then that is a culture of death. And then that is not really a blessing. A blessing should promote life, should give life, should respect the human being, should build others, should create unity, not division, should give life, not death, should give continuity, not blocking that is a blessing and that's when the blessings of goodness should multiply wherever we are and we hear of psalm 103 bless the lord all my soul my soul the soul is the engine of the body meaning bless the lord that part which moves me that which gives me life meaning bless the lord all my life my whole body, mind, heart, and soul, bless the Lord. Meaning, speak well of God. Speak well of each other because God is present in each other, creating the image and likeness of God. Speak well of every creation by taking good care of it, not by destroying it. Speak well of everyone, of everything that exists. In as far as speaking well means taking care, good care and promoting life, not promoting a culture of death, promoting life. We will say, yes, we are speaking well of God when we promote life, not death. We will say we are speaking well of God when we promote life of others and encourage others to be good, to do good and to avoid evil and to avoid death. That is when we can say we are speaking well of others and speaking well of God, which is should be our everyday motive that we speak well of each other. We speak well of God. We do good to each other. The good in its in essence, the good in its essence that everyone will look at this and say, yes, this is good. The good is in its nature. The good that corresponds to everything that is, it is, that is, that every, even a, a blind person will know that this is black because it's objectively black, or this is red, and because it's red objectively, or because this is right, that even if wherever you go, you know this is right, and our conscience will tell us that what we are saying and doing is right, or what we are saying and doing is wrong. And by the way, in every choice that we make as humans, but even as leaders of the society, of the family, we are invited to always involve the Bible. We have to always have the criteria of the scriptures. We have to always ask ourselves, in these words I'm going to speak, what does the word of God say? What does the scripture say? In this action I'm going to, to do, what does the word of God say? In this decision I'm going to make at home, in the church, in the community, what does the word of God say? When we know what the word of God say, then we will never, 
make a mistake in what we say, in what we do, and we will know that our conscience will be at peace. We will be at ease because what we are called to do and to say is only and the word of God. To listen to that spirit of God who works and speaks to us with the word of God that encourages us, that corrects us, that advises us, that shows us the right way of living. I should never make a decision without knowing what the Bible says and what also the church's tradition says. How was this thing done in the past? Before I make a decision, I have to ask myself, how was it done in the past tradition? First of all, I have to ask, what does the Bible say about the decision I want to make? And I consult even other people also because the word of God also speaks through others. Then I see how was it done in the past? Then from there, it takes time. We have to discern. We have to listen to each other. We have to prepare people's hearts if there are changes that have to be made of every type. We have to prepare. We have to discern. We have to listen to each other to see whether the decision we are going to make will do good to us or it will create confusion. That is what we are invited to do, my brother, my sister, to listen to that inner voice of the conscience that helps us to always make reference to the word of God. And so that whatever we choose is the right thing because God speaks so, because the scripture speaks so, because the spirit and the conscience speaks so. There are many situations that we may not know how to handle situations, but we should always go to the word of God and give time and give a process of discernment and give a moment of reflection and involve others in thinking together before we make any decision for the good of the people. That is what discernment is all about, that we involve God first, we involve the Spirit of God first, we involve each other also because God works through each other, we are image and likeness of God and the Spirit is in us also and then we look at the situation as it is and it is good of course to be sensitive to the many people who are struggling in life today like uh, the, those who are abandoned, those who are refugees, the homosexuals, the, the lesbians, the gays. We have to pay attention to all these kind of categories of people because they are also human beings. But there are some things which are clearly expressed in the Bible that we have to be careful about. Genesis. In Genesis, we talk about and hear about the creation of the world and how God created man and the woman. And even biologically speaking, man is man because of what he has. And the woman is woman because of what she has. And we hear and read that that was, first of all, for their company. That's not good that man stays alone. I will make a woman a helper for him. So he did not make ma another man for man. He made a man and a woman. And the biological, even the structure of whatever is there, let me call it the apparatus, <laughs> is, is clear that a man looks like this and a woman looks like that. And so that is automatically merging together. And that's why we read even from Genesis 2, verses 24, that a man will leave his father and the mother and go and join with a woman at marriage, of course, and the two will become one. And what God has united, no one should put it asunder. A man goes to join with a woman, not a man and a man or a woman and a woman. It is clearly expressed. Of course, with all respect to whoever has challenges with the, 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 the humanity of someone, that, of course, they need to be welcomed to, be felt, to make them feel at home. And in order to really bless them as well as individuals, if there is any blessing, it's of individuals. Because here it's clear, a man will leave father and mother and join a woman and the two will become one. That is marriage. That is marriage. Not a man and a man, and a woman and a woman. Because why? What happens in marriage? Me, I'm now speaking as a liturgist here. When we bless people, when we bless people, 
and let us understand this clearly. The words match with the action. The words match with the action. We call it ritus et preaches. The words, the prayers matches with the action, the gestures. The prayers with the gesture. And now we are blessing a married couple of a man and a woman so that what? So that they can express the true love of a man and a woman so that that love can bear fruit of their children. So procreation, so showing the blessing contains the love between husband and the wife, man and the woman. The blessing, as we extend the hands, the gesture, contains the procreation giving back to children meaning promoting life because that life cannot continue with man and man that stops and blocks life three that that as they procreate children as they procreate children and give birth to children they take care of the children so we pray that the lord may bless this husband and the wife that they become one and they show love every moment, every second to each other, enjoying their love life together and supporting each other in good times and in challenging times and making life easier for each other's husband and wife. So we bless them so that they can enjoy their marriage life. And as they enjoy their marriage life, we bless them and say, may you also give birth to children, especially those couples that are still young. May you give birth to children because it's a gift so that the continuation is there, life continues. And we pray also that as you give back to children, may you give them a good example. A good example. And by taking good care of them, this is the content of the blessing. Plus the gesture of which is of extending hands towards the couple. Extending hands, which is a sign of passing on of power from God. That's what a minister, a liturgical minister, does blessing the couple. We are called to bless each other. Yes. We are called to bless each other. Okay? That is it. Even as humans, we bless each other. We speak well of each other. Husband bless a wife. Wife bless a, uh, bless a husband. Children bless their parents. Parents bless their children. This is common in many cultures. Okay, we bless things. Of course, the more things are reserved for liturgical purposes, the more they are reserved for liturgical ministers. You cannot tell a lay person to bless the altar or the church. No, that is reserved to the bishop. You cannot tell a lay person, I don't know, to consecrate what. That's reserved for the priest who has the powers, who receive the oils and pray of consecration and laying of hand, see, to consecrate the bread and the wine which turns into the body and blood of Christ. That belongs to the priest. So the more an object is close to the church, the more it is reserved to the church ministers. Parents can bless the food at home, yes. Children can bless the food at home, yes. Because it's close to their way of living there. So this is the issue of blessings, my dear brother and sisters. We, Every one of us is called to bless, yes. Because we have that baptism of priesthood in us. Okay? Then others have the ministerial priesthood. They are ministers, church ministers, who are called to be humble servants, to serve humbly other brothers and sisters in humility in the example of christ yes of course christ was close to the broken hearted he came for the poor he came for the sick he came for sinners that's all true but there are things he never compromised about the bible remains the bible scripture remains scripture yes he was sensitive to those who are suffering and that's what we are called to be sensitive to those who suffer for sure, that's what it makes us a true Christian. Even those who have some kind of uh, human challenges, we are called to be sensitive to those who suffer. That is true because we are invited to be like Christ, who is sensitive to those who suffer. Those who have challenges, including the homosexuals and the lesbians. But this kind of style does not promote life. And in case someone has all this kind of challenge, one invitation is to consult experts. 
medical experts to consult religious experts to pray over to create a positive environment which is healthy with the, whereby there is a complete a complete environment of men and women an environment of a family a family is not made up of only one man and one woman or one woman and one woman it is made up of a husband of a wife of a children and this is what is composed of a family and this is what promotes life otherwise life is dead life is dead and we are all invited to promote this life to promote this life always and everywhere and to defend the life which we have freely give received from the lord if our parents were to decide and say no me the mother wants to get married to another mother and then the, the father wants to get married to another man man and man then where would we come from and that's why this is an attention that should be given yes to these people who have this challenge by seeking medical attention, spiritual attention, and the social attention with an environment that integrates, that brings them together, that makes them feel good as they keep working on themselves to regularize the whole reality. And at the same time, if as if God wish, wishes, and leave everything to God. They do the best they can and leave the rest to God. Otherwise, what we are creating is an environment whereby a man and a man goes together and there's no future there. We are killing the future. We are killing the future of humanity by encouraging such a kind of culture that does not promote life at all. So, dear friends, to sum up, we bless the married couples of husband and wife so that they can promote life so that they can show love to each other every moment and enjoy their love life together so that they can take care of their children and every creation but if we say we are blessing a couple of man and man we are blessing them so that they can begin to do what so that they can now do what or a woman and a woman so that they what what next is good Yes, to speak to them as individuals, to bless them as individuals, but not as couple. To bless them as individuals, but not as couple. And to bless them as individuals so that they can become better. Because benediction means to speak well of this individual so that he can become a better person and do good and be good and instead of doing evil and being evil. Because what is moral? is clearly explained in the Bible. What is immoral is clearly explained in the Bible. We have the Ten Commandments, and they are guide, guiding us seriously. And we can know, I don't need to come and tell you that what you are doing is wrong, or what you are doing is right. You know it, my brother, my sister. Your conscience will tell you, but the Bible also clearly says what is moral and what is immoral. This is what we have to listen to, that voice of the conscience, but also the scriptures. So if I am to bless, I bless the married couple of man and woman in order for them to promote life and give life to more children and expand as blessings from the Lord. But if I'm to bless, uh, if there are people who have a challenge with homosexuality or with lesbianism and so on and so forth, I have to bless them as individuals, not as couple. Individual, one, one, one person. Because I feel there is something to correct there. Because what is the future now? I bless a couple of these, these, two, these two lesbians or uh, homosexuals so that after that they do what? They continue living together. And promoting life in that way and then the children who are seeing them are able to see that a man and man are living together and woman and woman are living together then you'll find that children who are already normal and they are functioning very well they will begin imitating those individuals ah look at those 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 individuals who are living man and woman i can also live like that and yet they are normal then you see it's a disorder which is created in the society which does not promote life it is a disorder created in the society 
of a disorder of man and man or woman and woman which is created in the society which is not healthy for the growth of that society because in that society where man and woman is or woman and woman is if they're not helped this kind of society there there is a culture of death there's no you will not expect children to come from man and man or children to come from woman and woman and the children who have come up and they are normal when they look at these examples they will be taken up and they want also to become man and man or woman and woman and then what is the future of our society what is the future who will take care of politics of economy of religion religion who will take care of our social life who will take care of each other where will they i mean where will be the future of the human life my brother my sister here is a matter of opening your eyes to contribute to see what you can do to promote a life a culture of life an atmosphere of life and air which gives and gives life and this means therefore that we have to embrace each other and to see the best we can do to help each other because each one of us have challenges yes yes each one of us is growing nobody none of us is already a saint we are all learning to be saints but we are also learning together to see how to accompany each other Eh? those who are sick we accompany them we don't abandon them those who have challenges of of any kind of disorder we also accompany them because the natural way says man looks like this and woman looks like that and man and woman together husband and wife give children and promote the children and the more they give the children the more the life grows in the society from generation to the generation that's why i am here talking to you that's why you are there listening to you to your, to, to, to me my brother my sister because you came from a woman and there was a man who was involved there and that was your husband your your your, your father my father and my mother God bless them wherever they are. And for those who have gone ahead of us, may their soul rest in peace. A respect to all the mothers and all the fathers. A respect I give and prayers and blessings to all the husbands and wife. Praying also for those who are planning to get married as husband and wife. May the Lord bless you so that you may give more children to the world, more life to the world, so that you may show love to each other and enjoy life together as husband and wife, supporting each other because it is your strength that you find from your wife as a husband or from your husband as a wife. That is your strength. And try to make things always easier for each other as husband and wife. And then life will be easier for both of you as husband and wife and as a family. I salute you, all of you who have the courage to settle down with the husband and wife. And for those who are about to get married, God bless you as you continue regularizing and doing things the right way. Those who are about to get married as husband and wife, as a woman and a man. May the Lord bless you in, as you get ready. And for those who are struggling with life, especially those uh, who have uh, some kind of uh, different way of acting and responding, let us call it maybe like a kind of like a, a, a physical disorder in one way or another, we pray for you that the Lord may help you, if it is his wish, to realize and accept your situation and if it's wish may miracles happen through your lives so that you may realize if you are a man that you are a man and if you are a woman that you are a woman and if, so that you can also get married uh, to uh, to each other as husband and wife as man and woman not as man and man and not as woman and woman my brother my sister let's do the best we can to encourage life, to promote life. And may the Almighty God bless us more. May the Almighty God bless us more as we continue listening to Him, especially through His Word, which is in the Scriptures, and through the Spirit that moves us every moment. And may we continue blessing each other, speaking well of God and speaking well of each other and speaking well of myself also, doing good to myself, doing good to others, doing good to 
God. Speaking well of God and many wonders he has done. May we continue speaking well of God and many wonders he has done and which he continues to do today and which he will do even tomorrow. May we also thank God and speak well of each other. Speak well of each other. Let Almighty God bless you, my brothers, my sisters. Amen. This is Father Moses Wanjala. Greetings from Jerusalem. Praying that God blesses you abundantly. And that's my wish and prayer for you that we continue journeying together and accompanying each other in every moment of our lives. And for those who are struggling with life, courage, courage, you are not alone. Do the best you can to do good and to be good and leave the rest to God so that at his own time, he may accomplish the good work he has started in you. Be good, do good, speak well of others, do good to others. That is what it means to be a blessing. Greetings and blessings from Jerusalem to you and to your loved ones. And let us make a world, this world a better place for each one as we continue promoting a culture of life, not a culture of death. Amen.